Toddy, factor cap. The NBA All-Star Game should be USA versus World. Uh, I'm going to say this is a cap. I just don't think there's that many. Like, I get that the world is starting to catch up with the U.S. Like, you know, the Giannis is, the Embiid, Jokic, Luka, Shea. This is kind of in that category as well. Um, but the, I just named, what, like five players? And then there's everybody else. There's LeBron, there's Steph, there's, um, you know, Anthony Edwards, just a bunch of – I feel like the majority of the NBA is obviously uh, domestic, uh, U.S.-based versus, you know, guys, you know, coming from other spots. But the, you see guys like Wimby who were – obviously um didn't even play or grow up really in the states grew up in france and you know played out there his whole life and then when it was time to make that transition he, he didn't go to college he just fucking mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he went to um but you know lebron didn't go to college too so there are definitely different mm. ways for guys to kind of um mold their way into the nba um but there's that there's definitely been different ways for guys they have kind of paved the way, you know, the high school route, um, guys, you know, going straight to the league out of high school. Um, the NBA kind of, you know, shied away from that a little bit. I don't know why. Um, maybe it was uh, – I don't know why they shied away because I, I thought it was pretty cool that guys were coming out of high school. And then you got guys like Brandon Jennings um, who kind of weaseled their way around that one-year gap period and they end up going overseas – and making a shit ton of money overseas, and then oh, Lamelo, I'm a top five pick. Yeah, Lamelo Ball, and you know you're seeing guys like JG um, go to the G League and get you know picked second overall. Scoot Henderson um, went to the G League, you know. So um, there are definitely different ways to do it, but I feel like if the NBA didn't create that one year gap rule, um, then guys would just be coming out of high school, um, which I don't see anything wrong with at all, but. Um, I guess that's the rule now. So I'm going to say that this is a cap just because I don't think there are enough world guys for there to be, for that to be an all-star format, if that makes sense. Gary, I know that earlier you suggested a change for the all-star game being playing it after the season, like the NFL does. And so factor cap, the NBA all-star game should be USA versus world. I'm going to say a uh, cap on this one, Sean. Um, I'd kind of piggyback on what Vaughn says. I was just, it, just that's really what it right there. I don't, I don't want to take spots away from people just because there were not enough team on the quote unquote American team it's or on the world team. Basically, kind of in a way, like, yeah, I just want the top 15, top 20 players, top 22 players, or however you want to split. If you want to add two more spots, 15 spots, we have top 30 players in the league. They deserve to be all star or all star caliber to make this team. Simple as that. And you know, if it can shake out to be fifteen versus fifteen to make you know this thing happen one year, that'd be cool. But I think the Rising Star game was like that. Yeah, exactly. The Rising Star mm -hmm, game exactly. was like that. So like then again, like you know, you just don't want to put people who don't deserve to be in it or who are on the edge because you know, in a sense, that kind of messes up history in a way, and that kind of takes the uh, glory out of making that uh, high achievement, you know what I'm saying? To say that you're the, basically the top 25 player in the world when you make this type of team, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really want to take that away just because, you know, USA versus world, there's not enough spot. So I think that's why this idea doesn't work for the All-Star game. But if they want to have something like a five-on-five -five, like tournament, maybe Sean or something like that, that would be cool, you know, like – have enough five on five where like all right one team might not have enough superstars something like that that'll be cool like you know maybe like this happens at the end have at the end of the year they have an all star game and then they can have a side game where they have a couple good world players a couple good USA players playing you know I I know that brings it, intrigue and you know we want really to look at the statistics especially in boxing when they have kind of race versus race you know cards you know the people do kind of tend to you know stand up and watch those a lot because. Hey, I don't know. It's just what we're built on, I guess, in this world, you know. Races on races, I guess. They always always comes back to that, I guess. So, in a sense, I can see how that can be intriguing and working. And, you know, now, obviously, how there's so many diverse players in the NBA. I think 30% are, like, from out of the United States in the NBA. So, I love to see how, you know, it's getting diverse and different guys are getting representative from all different type of cultures now in the NBA. So, that's a good thing for the league to keep promoting. But, 
and for this particular idea, I don't think it would be a good idea for the NBA to do this particular idea. But in some type of way to, you know, show off that they do have all sorts of different people playing this game in, in their sport, it's going to keep helping them grow. And, you know, maybe one day you never know. They'll have an NBA team in London. You never know, man. They're, they're trying to make things happen. Technology is getting greater and greater. They're trying to make things happen. So somehow, some way they can get a flight that's an hour from sat to London book it you gotta fly you gotta you got you know you got a game this weekend so you know you know they've been trying to test those things out in the nfl maybe one day so it'll be cool man it'll be cool to keep spreading their wings and keep trying to do these type of things but for this particular thing just don't want to take the allure from someone not making it just because there wasn't the spots for their you know for a certain side you know for a certain nation i guess you could say so yeah cap i'm gonna say oh well Real quickly, I'll just say factor cap. The NBA All-Star game should be USA versus world. You know what? I'm going to say fact because I really enjoyed the Rising Stars game when it was USA versus world. And the reason why is because of Canada. Canada has produced several really good NBA players, whether if it be Jamal Murray, Andrew Wiggins, RJ Barrett, the list goes on. All the All-Star guys, though. Jamal Murray was an all-star. Andrew Wiggins was an all-star. RJ Barrett is like on the cusp of being an all-star. Not probably not right now. Jamal Murray never made an all-star yet. Has he not really? Wow. He deserves it because he's been he's had bad regular snap injury. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Javon. You you he's a player. He's an all-star though. He's all-star caliber. That's for sure. Yeah, he certainly is. And that that's crazy to even think about. Um, but he should be one day. And like, even like Carl Anthony towns could be considered in that group. Um, uh, as well as a Deandre Aiden who was born in the Caribbean islands. Um, and so even DeMontis Sabonis was born in the United States. I think he was born in Portland when his dad Arvidas was playing for the trailblazers. Um, but if, if they, if they relax the, uh, well, yeah, Laurie, of course he's, he's the finisher he's got to be on the list uh, but but I, i'm kind of i'm kind of talking about the guys that are in the gray area right now like if they allow some of those guys who are in the gray area like a sabonis who was born in the united states but like he has lithuanian ties if they let those guys play for the world team that's where it could become a little more even and get to gary's point they wouldn't have to do like all right Here's 12 guys that were born outside of the United States. And here's 12 guys that were born in the United. Like they should just pick the 24 all-stars and then divide it from there. And then that's where the gray area players could go to one side, because you look at a list right now and I'm, I'm going to include Jamal Murray, Andrew Wiggins, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Deandre Ayton, even DeMontis Sabonis. Those are guys who I would consider in the all-star team. Yeah. You just named well, two, okay. like six people. There was only like two guys that were worthy of being on those. Yeah, that is correct. Carl That's Anthony Towns, <laughs> Demontis Sabonis should have been an All Star, but he wasn't. Um, yeah, but he, here's the, here's the well, we got to find twelve, and so I exactly. just named well, five. We're trying to find now. We're giving guys who don't deserve it. But go ahead, go ahead, finish your point. Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, Lowry, Markkanen. <laughs> Pascal Siakam, Kristaps Porzingis, Rudy Gobert. I mean, that's eight right there. And then you start to throw in a, a Nikola Vucevic, who's been an all-star before. That's nine. Alperin Sengun, he could be an all-star one day. Um, either one of the Bogdan Bogdanoviches. You get close enough. But, you know, I, I think saying this list is kind of defeating my so own. So you're going to kick out? I know. You're going to kick out Kevin Brand? Saying this list, I know Sean's thinking like, damn, that means we're not going to have – you're going to not to have no disrespect, bro. But whoever you just said at the end, they're going to make it over Fox? Come on, bro. Slap them in the face. I'm they sorry. They're going to make it over KD? They're going to make it over Like, bro. Well, uh, Ron I think is <laughs> Yeah, I think Over I just Kawhi. killed my own. I'm gonna take off Over my Paul hat. <laughs> yeah, just take off my hat because this is yeah. cap. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> um, so, so, anyways, as we close things out.